Welcome to the RPG Podcast. And we are live. Oh, God, Pat! Presented by Sheep. A Time Wheel Production. I mean, my favorite book is like Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Oh, that one I read too. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, that one I read too, but it was a little like six years ago in Germany. That one I read too. That's a good, I mean, yeah, that's, that's like my one. Bible because <laughs> I've used, you know, one. yeah, it really is. People, I really recommend that to, I had my whole team read it. We would read one chapter a week and talk about the principles of the book and, and a lot of them, you know it's it's such an old book it was written in 1908 but it yeah. has all the principles are valid well, it has so much value especially if you're an entrepreneur and own your own business it's it's very valuable i can understand that and it's great that you have your old, like whole team reading it i mean it's uh, strengthening the company right yeah and it just and it, mindset exactly it's all a power po like positive thinking yeah, believing, yeah. and uh yeah, I, I this I have this tattoo. It's called, it says faith. You can't really read it that good, but faith, yeah. and it's you know it, not necessarily in like Jesus. Although I, I'm I'm a fan. I like Jesus, yeah. but uh, yeah. it's just having faith in the vision, you know, in the in the outcome, and like when well, I imagine when nice. you go into a fight, you have to believe you're going to win. Yeah, you're not going to win. <laughs> If your mindset is not there, and like for me, boxing, like combat was probably uh, in general, like 90% is just mentally. And if you're mentally not prepared and your mindset is not strong, like you could be trained so well because I mean, at the highest level of boxing, the A-level fighters, they all do the same training. It's, it's all the same workout. So everybody, everybody's mm -hmm. body is prepared 100%. But if your mindset is not there, like everything can happen in the 12 rounds and, and the fight, and it's just... 36 minutes, like 40 minutes of fighting, and you spent two or three months training and all your life in this, yeah. uh, uh, in this profession, and if your mindset is not right for it, which can happen very easy. I mean, like, you can break down any time because nothing is easy, right? So it's very important to have a strong mindset, and books like that are very important, such essential to just always keep up and read stuff like that to show. I mean, it yeah, like you're the champion right now, and and you know, and I, I'm a, I own a business, and I don't know that it would be that way if I hadn't read the book, if honestly, because I didn't necessarily believe in. I don't know that I didn't believe in myself, but I was just a cog in the system. I was working, doing payroll at a yeah. cubic, cubicle, and um, just a nine to five normal job. And uh, I was reading that book and I remember I would go into the, we had a boardroom at the corporate office, which I was not mm -hmm. a board member. I was just an employee, but I would go in there when nobody was in there and I would imagine myself as the president leading the boardroom meeting and, yeah. you know, and having these influential figures and just having a meeting and stuff. And it's like, but it was all mind, you know, believing that I could, be something yeah. different than what was, which was so, just... And you also have to be inspired by something, right? To believe that. I mean, every, we all have self-doubt. I have self-doubt, you have self-doubt. And of like course. anytime, every day, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. but it's, most, it's very important to keep going and like be disciplined and also like on the bad days, just wake up and get the job done. And uh, sometimes it's even more than just, uh, you know, just keep going. <laughs> so, I mean, something I just thought of about the mind, you know, I, I hear a lot of guys in the gym, they'll like kill it in the gym and they're the best. And they're like, there should be a champion, but when they get it in the so ring, often. they fold. They it like, happens so often. We, we call them sparring, sparring champions. Uh, <laughs> and I grew up with boxing. I saw so many in Germany, like back in the days, there was a big promotion, universal box promotion. My stepfather was one of the fighters signed to them. The Klitschko's were training there. Like, uh, Michashevsky, like many, many great world champions from wow. Europe. And I grew up watching them. Most of my uh, things that I know I learned in that gym, like watching and observing these guys and wanted to be like these guys because they were like idols. I was like 12, 13 years old. I was like, oh, like they are every day so disciplined, doing this hard work. And like it's, uh, it takes a lot. 
And then you see and observe all these fighters, and then you see who is making it. And then you always figure out, like, there's so many guys in the gym, they're so good, so talented, great, sparring world champions. But when it comes to the spotlight, actually, the day to perform, they are not performing. So yeah. <laughs> something is lacking, you know? Yeah, and I, it's pressure, I guess. And, and you have the opposite. You have guys there in the gym, they're like, you can't do nothing in the gym. They're not motivated. They don't want to do anything. But when it comes to perform, they are on the A game and then just like, great. <laughs> then, yeah, you know? it's wild. It's so mm. wild. Um, I like hearing that you started so early at t like 12, 13, because that's, I, I mean, in like with Floyd Mayweather and Tyson Fury, they both started like in the crib, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then with, um, Wilder, you know, he didn't start till he was like 20. I know, but he so, still did great. Of course. But the difference is the muscle, maybe the muscle memory. I mean, that stuff you learn when you're a kid. And I mean, and I think 12, 13 is probably pretty good because you're just coming into your body, you know, like you're, sure. you're starting to, to the develop. Puberty, and it's yeah. probably the time when you are like, the years 12, 14 till 18, 20, you're developing your personality and like you gain, like you, you're like a swarm and like sucking every information in, sponge, I, I, yeah. I would say, like sponge, sorry, a swarm is like German. <laughs> 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 like sponge. And you suck everything in and like it's very important that you suck the right energies and the right knowledge in and it's true. But in the heavyweight division, I saw so many fighters, they start boxing at 28, 29 yeah. and uh, they still can make it because we always say in boxing, there's like boxing and there's heavyweight boxing. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's a little different because you can do so much with the weight there and like you, you don't have to be the technical best guy. You don't have to be the fastest guy, but you can hit hard, but you can be like, your body can be strong. And I think Wilder did great. He became a world champion. He was so dangerous and great fighter. I mean, look so, how much he achieved, right? Yeah. And he's, I, I just think he's cool looking. Like mm -hmm. he just looks like a cool dude. I mean, it <laughs> sucks that he kind of, I guess, had like a little bit of a bad attitude when he lost. But nobody likes to lose. If you show me of someone course. that likes to lose, you show these guys have loser. big egos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I don't, I don't hold it against him. I, I do mm. enjoy Tyson Fury's antics, like his, like the singing at the end, or he's just really witty and funny you know so it's kind of fun to to hang around i'm not hang around because i would but he looks <laughs> like he would be a fun guy to, but both he's of them great really energy good. i think he's just great energy because he was down and up and he went to this life life of yeah. roller coaster and he like he actually last time i think it was uh during christmas eve we had a party at the gym like they always do on, on christmas uh event at the gym and then i was uh, i was just in the alley and watching what they're doing like giving gifts out so oh. and i see through the alley where the fifth street gym is uh, a big guy like shiny with his versace shirt and like the kids like all dressed up and like pink and like like so colorful you know and i was like oh that's tyson fury he's like walking to the gym just by coincidence because he wanted to see where Mohamed Ali used to train at the 50th yeah. gym. And she walked to the gym. He was like so humble, making pictures with everyone there. And like, he's a very like nurse, nice person to be around. And when it comes to fighting, he knows the business. He knows the show side of it and like how to promote. And so like very professional. And he's just like great energy. Yeah. Uh, right? Did you, did you meet him? Yeah, I saw him there in the gym, and I, I saw him one time also in Germany. He was at the fight, uh, Kubar Pulev fought against Derek Chisora, and that was the second main event, so I was fighting there, and I saw them there, he was in the, in the audience, because he was supporting Derek Chisora there. That was, I think, like 2015 or 16, but he was a champion at that time. Yeah. The break, so, and I just see him, like, observing, he is, like, very confident, great energy, and uh, great, great guy. Yeah, I mean, that's what you want to sort of be. Like they say, who you surround yourself with is who you become, True. you know, a little bit. And so, and even I love talking to you guys because you're like champions and you want to be surrounding yourself with people who are trying. And even though we're not like together, whatever, it's just like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, we're getting to have this conversation and this energy transfer and talking and ideas and it, it rubs off on yeah. you you know and you could get that maybe confidence that you might not have had because you see it in someone else and you're like 
maybe I need to be more like, you know, like that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're hanging around a bunch of losers, you know, and that's just what all you know. Just put you down, right? Like, yeah. It's very important who you hang around. I, I learned that early in my life, and I was like always keeping my circle small because there's so many people out there who just like, you know, sucking your energy sometimes, and like it's or on, on co total opposite different paths. So if you're on, on a path, like you know your goal, you should surround your people with, uh, surround yourself with people who have the same goal or like almost similar and like mm -hmm. the same hustle and you know are focused and push you. Absolutely, I love that. I um in the the book, the Think and Grow Rich, it's called a Mastermind, and I I have a bunch of I have like five friends that all own businesses also, and we typically meet once a month it's been a few months but we just meet and talk and and um share problems successes chat you know and ask each that's other great. questions yeah and so that's what I, they say right the five people you surround yourself you become an average of them so yeah. if you know it's very i think it's very important because you become your environment and there was actually something Elon Musk said that was so, like funny, hilarious, but I liked it. Like, you know, people are uh, having like baby showers and like we should do like business showers. Every time a friend of us is starting a new business, we should like collect money and just like support the business, right? Do business showers. And uh, I, I like agree. That, that idea. I like great. that, but it's funny how the your friends typically, some of them are the last ones to support you when you start a new business. They're, they, a lot of times, it's so strange, right? It's so weird. They, it, they, say, they, I don't know if it, it was in that book or in some other book I read. The most supportive person uh, regarding your business or your like profession is always not a family member, not a friend. He's like somebody you don't even know. It's always a stranger who, really? who, who will like push you more and like really uh, support you. Yeah, I saw this. So, I mean, I saw a YouTube video probably like 10 years ago and it was, they're all like, all these people are stand, standing around, like not even, they're at a music festival and they're mm -hmm. like sitting there and nobody's dancing. But then one guy gets up and starts dancing and they're like, everyone's looking at him for a while and then somebody else gets up and then someone else gets up. And like, when, when you see someone else doing something that you want to do, it's like, ooh. Mm -hmm. But when it's a friend, it's like a little, or a family member sometimes is a little bit too close. I'm not sure the yeah. psychological reasoning behind. It's like some ape shit, you know, some monkey shit where we want to be the king <laughs> yeah, of the, the jungle. Uh, egos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But when you don't know them, it's because yeah. I've, I've had quite a few people over the years reach out. This dude from South Africa. I remember I did a Kickstarter. Do you know what that is, Kickstarter? No. It's a it's a crowdfunding website where you present your idea and then oh. if the people like it they'll kind of give you some money and oh interesting yeah and they'll pre pre buy they'll pre buy mm -hmm. the product and so I pulled like five hundred people gave me like fifty dollars and then that was how we started and oh wow there was this one dude who saw what we did and he just kind of really wanted to be a part of it and he was from south africa and and we were working together for a while and then he he wanted to do my accounting and i was like i'm not giving you my access to my money dude sorry so <laughs> and i i just you know that guy yeah. but i appreciated his effort and he actually kind of helped along the way and an, another dude from great britain jamie mm -hmm. he helped for quite a while but then Again, like with weird egos, he's like, "I made you," and I'm like, "You didn't make me, dude." Didn't, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I was—I mean, I was doing it before. I appreciate your help and everything, but I can't. Everything I have, like I sacrificed for, like I didn't get paid for the first five years or whatever, mm. and and so and he wanted me to just give him a piece of the pie. I was like, "I'll sell you some because I appreciate you, you know." But I put in a lot of money into this. I didn't. Yeah, I get, I'm not giving any time like, and effort. Yeah, I mean it's right. your baby. Your business is your baby, and like all the time you invested it, I can I can imagine. And uh, there are always people around who just like want yeah. to take over the 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 best way, and so you know. And well, do you so, have do you have like I imagine people coming in wanting to manage you or wanting to be your agent or? Well, yeah, you have that many time in boxing, and in boxing it's so easy to just jump in. So 
I always joke, like I say, everybody who's just walking around the boxing gym, next minute he feels like he's a manager, promoter, boxer, or trainer or something because it's so easy to jump in. And then like it's not like you can't just go to a football game and then the next day you say, you know what, I manage Tom Brady or I play with, I don't know, you know, with some A-level fighters, A-level uh, players. But in boxing, it's so easy and you have so many... I would say scammers. <laughs> so there are always people around, you know, well, manage you well with this and here and there. Especially yeah. as a young fighter, it's very important to like uh, know what's real and not, 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 what is just not real because in boxing there's so much. Uh, people are trying else. to, yeah, they want to get in on it and take mm. advantage, like uh, Don King, that guy I heard, <laughs> you know. And he was one of the serious ones, you know, like he still made like good fights, even right. though he was like, just scamming love fighters, but he did like good promotions and stuff like that. But nowadays you have just like really so many guys who are like, oh, I'm a manager, I'm a trainer, I'm a, like even boxers, you can't even fight, but they collect an Instagram following and then they have a million followers and everybody thinks, oh, this is the top guy. And then you, on the other hand, you have this guy who has maybe one follower on Instagram, but he is the top guy. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And we are living in this uh, generation now. Everything is like more, I don't know, kind of fake it till you make it or something, they say. And you never know what's like the real deal. So you got to be careful with that. I know first round management is in Miami. Do you work with them at all? Very strong management, no. You don't know? Okay. They, uh, they, they do more probably, uh, I think they do everything, but mostly maybe uh, MMA fighters. I'm not sure if they do. Yeah, you see it's hard. MMA is hard. It's, it's, it's good. It's but, it's bringing, but it's like bringing more attention to boxing, I think. Also, like, rec you know, as of the past couple of years with Jake Paul and mm. Conor McGregor and like these super <laughs> fights and stuff. Yeah, the exhibition fights. And like, they're interesting. I mean. It, it draws more attention to the sport and it made me draw like I used to watch fights with my dad and then you know like Tyson and yeah, whatever okay. basically and then uh, UFC came out and I watched that with him and then I've, yeah. I've just been a I'm just a fan of combat sports in general because of like the nice. heart and the story and the overcoming like most nobody most boxers don't come from like wealthy parents true true yeah and so but, but nowadays like, it's changed you have to have a wealthy background to be a great like to get the good fights so it's like kind of it is a little bit <laughs> well a little bit. but also the antics of personality and and mm. making yourself something like to stand out and amongst everyone else you got to like talk some shit or do something crazy yeah I mean, I mean, you don't have to. Yeah, but it has to be authentic. Like, I always think, like, for myself and where I come from, I always saw boxing as a gentleman's sport. It doesn't matter if you come from poverty or you come from established family. If you're good, you are good. And it's like fencing with your fists, you know. There's respect. It's men's sport. No disrespect to women who are doing it. They're doing great and everything. But, I mean, it, the heritage where it comes from, one of the most uh, oldest Olympic combat sports ever, we always watch fist fights and wrestling and stuff you know now it's combined but boxing is one of the like most prestige one i would say and was always a gentleman's sport and it's uh i think it was always interesting it will be always probably the king of the combat sports if it doesn't get so corrupted i mean ufc is great they're doing great shows and great events i'm a fan of that i like that too but i just think like boxing is like a little bit more how you say sophisticated <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this episode is brought to you in part by Element Kombucha. It's a new sponsor. We're very excited. They sent me a care package and I drank them all. I can't even show you. I could show you this empty bottle right here, but uh, it's uh, Element Kombucha. They have CBD uh, um, infusions, THC free, really tasty blends. You know, kombucha is good for the gut bio. So if you have been taking antibiotics, it's always good to take some probiotics. And Element Kombucha is sponsoring this show. They're supporting us. So we're asking you to support them. They actually have really good prices. It's like 10, 15 bucks for a six or eight pack on their different options. They have variety packs, or you can just get the summer vibes blend. 
whatever you want. It's at elementkombucha.com. Promo code RPG11 will save you 11% on your purchase, and they'll know that we sent you, and we would appreciate the support. Last but not least, sheathunderwear.com, the greatest underwear on the planet, the underwear of legends, the underwear that keeps your balls from sticking to your legs. That's right. This is the best underwear because it keeps your boys cool. Check out sheathunderwear.com. Back to the show. <laughs> well, and like, to be honest, and everybody I think that watches MMA would agree, we want to see them standing up and banging, you know? So <laughs> boxing is just like, take all the bullshit out of it and just do and yeah. bang, bang, you know? Um, you know, I like the kicks and I like the takedowns and everything, but... I, feel I like, like the kicks. I, I just don't like the takedowns. I like kickboxing. I don't. I, I like to. I like the striking. But yes. if I'm like on the ground too close, I, I don't know. It's not my thing. But it's a preference, you know. Everybody to each, to each his own, right? Uh, right. Exactly. But it's like it's still it's like purified. It's it's like it, you know boxing is it, it it's taking out all of the excess and it's just like showing the people what they want to see, which is two mm. guys banging it out and, and in a, in a scientific somewhat like it's very strategic. strategic yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, you have to be mentally on your game. You have to be physically on your game. You have to be like, have the right team around you. It's like so many things that are uh, very important for boxing. And I mean, you ever, and especially the higher you get, the, the, the more uh, tight is the air in the ring. I mean, at the A-level fighters, everybody does great training. You have great trainers, great promoters and managers. And then in the fights, it's like really like maybe 1%, 2% advantage of the opponent to win a fight. So it's like very, very, uh, it's, it's an interesting sport. And I hope uh, boxing will never die. Many people say, oh, boxing is here and there. Probably because it's sometimes so corrupt, which I understand. But I still love boxing. And I, and I uh, felt the corrupt side of boxing on my own skin twice. So I know it, but I still love the sport. What happened? Me, what do you mean? But I got screwed in two fights because of my management. I had problems, which I actually won. And that happens a lot in boxing. That's why boxing is losing fans because sometimes, many times nowadays, not the guy who's really winning wins the fight. So he wins the fight, but not the decision. And fans yes. get just tired of it because they are not blind. Right. And, and this, they see more honesty in UFC, so they jump over to UFC, which I understand. But we in boxing, we have to keep the sport more clean and we have to, like, be more uh, dedicated to it. And if we love our sport, we have to just be real and honest with it. Totally. Yeah. People see bullshit and they don't want, I mean, it, I, uh, a bad decision can really. Yeah. And turn, it's too turn often. Yeah. It, 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 it ruins lives and careers and even fighters, they just walk away from boxing. And I understand that because it's just, it's, it's painful. And like most boxers dedicate their lives and like everyday training, weight cut. People just see sometimes only the 36 minutes, 12 rounds fights. And they are like, oh, he gets paid so much for just this fight. But they don't see like the three month preparation, the weight cut, the noisiness, the, the headaches, you know, and then sometimes fighters even die in the ring and afterwards, not because of the fight, because they did so much sparring, all these blows on the head, and it's like, it's much work, it's much work. Every work is like hard, but I think like combat sports are just like lonely and like physically also so draining, <laughs> draining. So, yeah. I love just, I mean, again, like I was hitting the bag and it, the, the, the physical aspect, because, and I like to run. But I'm a, I'm older, and my legs, my feet. I was in the army, and like just oh, wow. kind of broken down um, from all of the wear and tear. But my upper body is still kind of not broken down as much. So hitting the ba like just hitting the bag. I, I really like hitting pads though. Like pow, pow, pow. I have a dude. Yeah, that'll hold you can learn. Yeah, you learn so much on the pads. Like I remember yeah. when I was a kid, I learned boxing on the pads. Many people say back in the days, like Ali and Sugar Ray Robinson and so, and Leonard, at that time, nobody did pads, just the bag and like all the other excess pads, like a modern technique. But I remember when I was young with my brother, we learned boxing on the on the pads and I like it because you, your coach can tell you how to punch precise and like do everything right. And it's like one-to-one uh, -one work. So 
I like that too. It's like my most favorite because you're also on the ring. It's like kind of sparring feeling, but you don't get hit. So you exactly. protect yourself and then you're like well, better prepared for the sparring and for the fight. I like that too. Yeah, it's so fun. The, the, the pop, you know, like pop when they hit the... Because they're kind of coming at you and you just pop, pop, pop. And you'll burn out quick. Like I, I'll be hitting the pads with the timer, mm -hmm. you know, like a three-minute timer. And then I'm like, is that... When's the bell going to go off? Because I'm like tired <laughs> and then, already. Right. And then you do like 12 rounds. It's like an interval up and down. It's high intensity. That's why I want to develop this, the course because I think it's such a good stress relief. Mm -hmm. Like if you just have like or you go to your business, you have so much stress in your business. I can imagine as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur, and then you go to work out. You just have to like sometimes get this aggression out and like the stress, and just like punch it out. So I think it's a good stress relief, and it keeps your mind, body, and soul uh, together, and just like gets you the focus and like makes you feel good. So good, I love it, and. I mean, it seems like boxers are a little bit in better shape. You wouldn't think so, maybe, but then MMA fighters. And the reason, <laughs> the reason I say that is just because of, I guess, the Conor McGregor Mayweather fight, which you know, eh, I don't know if Conor's the best example because he has he doesn't have the best cardio. Mm. But but it it just seems like you know the twelve minutes or the twelve rounds or three minutes, like yeah, you have fun. you have to be in better shape. True. And so, but you have to be in excellent shape because 12 rounds, like, it's hard. I mean, like, and you're uh, most of the time the focusing that you don't get punched. It's like it's not like you're riding bikes or you're just doing the same thing. You have to be careful not to get punched because one punch can always decide the fight and can decide if you get tired or knocked out. And there's maybe one punch that you don't even see and you're prepared so good for the fight. This lucky punch lands on your chin or somewhere and you're just knocked out and your career maybe is done or like the fight is done and you were so so good prepared so it's high risk all the time and as you mentioned like conor mcgregor like if he looks physically so so good and tough and uh, well trained and on the other hand you have like guys like tyson fury in the heavyweight division like he doesn't look that yeah. trained by he is like he is, yeah. he is in excellent shape right totally what do you so i mean i don't know if you can answer this but you know, say the twelfth round comes around, and it's like a, like what are you thinking? Are are, are you thinking at the twelfth round or the last round or? Yeah, and, if, and like your last fight, where you do you think or do you just are you on muscle memory? Muscle memory. Yeah. Most of it's muscle memory because in, in, if you're in the ring and like the spotlights on are on you and so many thousands of people are watching and you can like embarrass yourself, just get punched and knocked out. You know what I mean? It's, it's like so much pressure on you. So that's why you do the training to just have that muscle memory and everything is like subconscious or automated. And uh, if you just walk in that you don't think too much because boxing can happen like this in seconds. Like, in boxing, we move like in milliseconds because a punch yeah. can, you know, in milliseconds. So you have to automate it and be like subconscious, so so well prepared that you are for any uh, occasion inside the ring already prepared because everything happens like this. Exactly. And that's life, not really, but you need like, yeah, not really with life, but in pressure situations, if sometimes you, like if you take the time to think, you'll be late and then you're not True. out already. True. You know? That's yeah. why I don't like to fight. I like to think in the preparation to be like prepared for every occasion in the ring, to be in the corner, being here, not just focus on one strength. Because I mean, in boxing, it's so interesting because you have fighters. One fighter is a strong puncher. The other fighter is a very good technician. The other fighter has good footwork. The other one is very fast. The other fighter is a very good counter fighter. The other one is very aggressive. So that makes all these fighting styles makes it so interesting because you want to see, you will see, oh, this counter fight, counter boxer, can he win against this puncher or will this puncher beat the guy with the good footwork? Like fighters come out from different shapes and sizes. Some fighters yeah, like are left handed strong. and right handed and true. Yeah. And that you have to be prepared for all of that for everything. So you kind of be like a chameleon, you know, like a chameleon and inside a ring that you can adapt to any occasion situation and uh, it's, it's very important because there's so many different styles and so one of them is like Tyson Fury does it excellent totally it says so 
Does your brother? Did your brother box at all? Yeah. Or not really. Yeah. Yeah, my brother did like professional fights, like 13, 13 and 0. He won all of them. Oh, but then wow. he went went to uh, he was uh, going to university, also studying law, and then he got into work, and he's now a corporate lawyer for H and M and Cost Group in Germany. So he's so busy, and but he's he was an excellent boxer, like. And he's, he uh, loved boxing. He was actually southpaw. But we had like management promotional pro problems in Germany. That's why I moved also here after I got screwed off after my last fight. So he didn't uh, continue with his professional career, and he just went to business. How is it there? You, t I mean, I'm assuming you talk to your parents and your brother, and just like, are they under heavy restrictions? Are they kind of just back to normal? A little bit middle. Yeah. Of the as I heard, the restrictions are even more. I mean, like oh. the flights from there are not even open. They will open on 8th of November, I think, from, from Europe to come here. And you have to be vaccinated. My brother got his vaccination now, my mother too. And I hope to see them like by beginning of next year. But he's like, you have to wear in Germany, for example, only this, uh, I don't know how they call it, B2 masks or something. They look kind of like this duck style masks. Only that those are allowed. And you have to wear them in every public area. So. It's totally different than in Florida. Yeah, I like I like what Florida's doing personally. Nice. Just because, I mean, because it, like I said earlier, and and I listen to all these different podcasters and they uh, doctors and scientists or whatever, and it's just like that the herd immunity, you know, and just like everyone kind of just needs to, like I said earlier, just kind of get go get get over it, go just move on with your life, and if you get it, mm. you kind of then you deal with it like if you got a cold and or the yeah, flu, yeah, yeah. you know the thing is i know so many people who got even vaccinated and they still got COVID. it's like you don't know where it comes from you know, it's, like, <laughs> it's strange right it's crazy yeah, it's, it's crazy it's very it crazy yeah and then you're like okay take another shot okay okay sure whatever <laughs> right <laughs> but take, you had pfizer okay try biontech and then astrazeneca but i mean like I don't know where this is going to, but it's a money, dude. It's like the it's all right, <laughs> all money, baby. I mean, big pharma is doing it like it's profiting at the end, and I know my brother told me that, like Pfizer and Modera were like yeah, like five years or six years ago, close to bankruptcy or something like that. I don't know if it's true, but hell of a sudden they're selling all these vaccinations. Yeah, they're doing I, good now. Right, they're doing very well. <laughs> yeah, we should have invested in in them. I bet, <laughs> maybe I don't know if I would invest in them right now, but we'll mm. it's uh it's just wild times, and I was just yeah curious about how like you came from Germany. You're originally like Armenian. Yeah, I'm born in Armenia, but my family moved to immigrated to Germany. Uh, when I was four, because one of my grandmothers is actually German, and one grandmother from my mother's side is Greek, so I'm pretty mixed. And yeah. my German grandmother said, like, in 1990s, when the Soviet Union break, and Armenia was an independent country for the first time, and they had, like, problems with Azerbaijan, as they have now, too. And it was war going on, and my father should go to uh, to, to war, and then he was, like, I have two kids, and my grandmother said... Uh, I'm a German citizen. Let's just move to Germany, and uh, your uh, uh, children will have better lives. And so it was. I mean, I'm very thankful. I grew up in Germany. Um, so I got my education in Germany, and uh, it was the right thing to do. And you said you were going studying to become a lawyer. Yeah, I just did two semesters. I, yeah. I finished. I finished high school in Germany, and then I went to University of Hamburg uh, for law. And uh, during the second semester, I uh, quit because I was doing sparring partners, as I said, and I was like, young. I was like, oh, I want to have a professional boxing career. And my first manager, he was, like, he, was he really believed in me to be a European champion, at least world champion. And I mean, he was right. <laughs> I, I did a pretty good career and uh, traveled so much with boxing, met so many different people, so many personalities. Um, it's, I'm very grateful and thankful for that. How old are you now? I'm 31 right now. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to my golden man's Absolutely. golden age. <laughs> yeah. Well, 33 is like, the, no, th like yeah, 31. I'm, I got 31 a few months ago. 
Yeah, I know, but like they say 30, I don't know if I heard that 33 is like the prime prime, like the, the maximum mm -hmm. mental and physical and everything, yeah. the culmination. Um, it's all. Comes and it together. goes to like 45 or like depends on, right? Exactly. No, it's like yeah. With, it's like with the woman in the 20s, we are a little bit later, but mm -hmm. less stronger. <laughs> no, yeah. And I feel like even something's going on with humans like we're aging slower because i still feel like i'm 43 right and, and i feel like i should be like all old and but i'm, I'm not i don't really feel that old i feel the same I, I feel the same way and if you're also watching like comparing to sports and boxing and so like back in the days you remember like tyson so they were in the primes when they were like 20. Exactly. Nowadays, you see like twenty years titles. You you look at them; they look like kids, physically not, not even yeah, like not even so uh, developed. And now you see like the fighters in their thirties and forties; they're so strong and like so mature and on the peak. You know, I think it, we're eating now better. We have better nutrition. Mm -hmm. We have better life expectations, and that's why we just uh, peak uh, a little bit uh, later, and then we last also longer. I mean, exactly. That's just how, how I feel. I, I agree. So I, I think that you hit the nail on the head with that. That's what I, mean, I, if think. I compare myself when I was like in my 25s. Like that. I didn't feel that strong as I am now. Like I'm physically feeling like, and also like mentally, like more confident and like strong. And I, I see all these fighters in their 40s now fighting and still on A level game, 39, 35, even in the uh, little divisions. And I think it's just like our nutrition developed so much, our food and like supplements. Yeah, it just, it used to, I guess, just be like the heavyweights that went into the 40s, like George Foreman or whatever. But now you have Mayweather oh. and, and Pacquiao, like the smaller fighters are lasting l later into the So world. many, yeah. I mean, yeah. Even the Twitch goes they were like 41, 42 in the heavyweight division, and like many such a light division of Floyd, too. And like the 30s are the really like the prime age now, I think, for I, combat athletes because they're just hitting their peak at that time now. I think like 35, 36. All the champions now in the heavyweight divisions, they're around that age. I love it. I love it. Uh, I, we're, we're coming up on time, but I wanted to just ask what, like, one more question about like your diet, you know, mm. do you have any kind of special diet? Not special, but uh, my girlfriend cooks now for me uh, most of the time and she cooks so good. Like she's cooking Mexican all over the time. And she does also like rice dishes and like, it's always like protein, some carbs and some vegetables. And it's just like, I'm, if I, if I'm off season, I eat the same thing. It's just like what I like. And, uh, Lots of fruits and uh, soups and like stuff like that. I don't eat so, so much fatty food at all. So for me, I don't have to go on a diet. I just eat like that always because I'm used to that since I'm a kid to that kind of food. So I don't go on a special diet, to be honest. Right. Yeah. Some people do. Some people don't. I mean, but it, it helps having a, a, a good woman, strong woman behind you and like believing and supporting in you, supporting you. Yeah, and I'm so, I'm so lucky. My girlfriend supports me so, and everything is so good. And she's like, she's just such a good uh, chef in our kitchen. And it's great that, that she supports me with that. And she likes to work out too. She's like also in the fitness industry, being like a bikini model here and there and works out every day. So we kind of share that passion to work out together and eat healthy and like uh, develop and be like better every day. And food is very important. You're living the dream, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Yes, Thank you indeed. so much. Well, thank you so much. I, yeah, and uh, you know, thank you. I, we can like wrap it up on that note. It's I really appreciate you coming on. It's great. No, to thanks talk for having to you. me, and thanks for having me on 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 uh, be, being on uh, on the board with Sheath. I I love the uh, the stuff. The underwear is great. I mean, like it is more <laughs> more, please. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll have to send you some more. I do appreciate how was, it. And, how, how did you get the idea to do Sheath? I didn't I didn't ask you that. You know, I was in the army and I was in Iraq on my second tour. And, wow. You know, like 2008. 2008. Oh. Yeah, so yeah. Iraq. 12, 13 years know. ago. And just 
you know how sometimes when you're hot and your balls stick to your leg, it's I it was it was that times like a hunt like a hundred because it was so hot in Iraq and I hadn't been able to shower for a few days because of the situation yeah. I was in and I was just like it would be better if everything was separated down there because I wouldn't be like sticking and it was just grimy and whatever yeah. graphic uncomfortable and so I just had that idea and I had already read the book and I was in it just. One of the things I had also watched the movie The Secret, and one of the things it's it's called The Secret. It's by yeah. Rhonda Byrne. Uh, she wrote a book and she made a movie. And one of the one of the um, phrases that stuck out in my mind was, "The universe likes speed. When you have an idea, don't hesitate. Act. Move now." Oh, yeah. So when I had the idea, I I was in Iraq and I went to the you know and I went to the store when I had a chance and I bought some underwear and some scissors and some paper and like drew out what I wanted. And, uh, you know, in the army they have tailors because you have to be measured. Your uniform has to fit mm. properly. So I, you typically would take a uniform to the tailor to get fixed up, but I took them underwear oh. and I had them <laughs> tailor my underwear and they were laughing at me a little bit, but they made it. And, you know, and that was just, that's how it all kind of started. And, from then, I, I I would tell some people, and, and everyone gets the whole ball stick into your leg thing. They're like, yeah, yeah. definitely, especially in yeah. like hot hot season, like in Miami, and like exactly. it's so hot. But that's a great idea and a very great story. I mean, the story behind is so great, and that's uh, I like that. And uh, how was it? Was it Napoleon Hill's book? Action is the real measurement of intelligence. Intelligence, uh, or something I, like that. I love it. Maybe from a different book, but it was like I think I, I, think I read it. Yeah, I think it's from a different book. I don't remember but that. But I think but it's also from Napoleon Hill. Action is the real measurement of intelligence. But I'm not 100% certain, but that's a great story. I mean, well, that's a great, uh, great quote because a lot of people who are quote unquote smart, they talk themselves <laughs> into something and then they talk themselves out of it and they don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I read that in, in one, of, one of his books, I think. But I'm, I'm not 100% certain. But I remember there was another movie in, in Iraq with, I think, Leonardo DiCaprio and Russell Crowe was a protagonist. What was the name of that? It was a great movie. They were in Iraq, too, I think, during that days. In German, the name the name of the movie is The, the Guy Who Never Lived. But in Germany, they always like change the title. I don't know why. I, I but, didn't uh, see that. That's a great movie. Maybe you've seen it there in Iraq, and it's, it's, it's a great movie. You should watch that. I should watch it. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, because I, I don't really watch that many movies. We're like now mm. we're watching old '80s and '90s movies. Me and my wife, because everything is so crazy right now. I just want to like kind of yeah. escape to another time when it, everything was normal. <laughs> but, but the movies were great to that time. Since now I'm watching the movies like from the '90s, early 2000s, and so because nowadays everything is like Netflix and they're like never-ending stories, all this mm -hmm. serious, serious, and serious. And yeah. I just like. I like I like a crisp, good movie, most two hours, and then you like you have a beginning and the ending, and yeah, feel right? good, happy ending. Maybe it's just fun, makes you feel yeah, good. I will send you the title of that movie. You have to watch it when you were if you were in Iraq. Maybe it was a great movie. I will, I will, and I want to. I'm going to look it up. Russell Crowe, and and, uh, and, and I want to name the title of this episode. Action is the true. Whatever. measurement of intelligence action is the true measurement <laughs> of intelligence i like that because that's we're both doing it and and that's mm -hmm. what uh, i want to kind of share with other people that's kind of why i do the podcast is to show like an average joe like me and you well you're, you're not you're, de you're definitely not an average joe i mean like you're doing great in, in your story is very inspiring and it's uh, very impressive and you were in Iraq. I mean, like definitely an average Joe. So, uh, well, and like of, I have a lot of respect for you. And back, I have respect for you, sir. And I really appreciate you coming on the show. We'll wrap Thanks it up. Having me. Thank you. It's been very cool. See, and it, that was fast. I was all tired, and now <laughs> I'm not tired. So, thank you. Chris, in German, we say crisp and short, short and crisp. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's very crisp. It, it, um, <laughs> And we're, we'll send you a new care package. And, oh, thank you so you know, much. We're going to yeah, get some more yeah. shirts pretty soon because we oh, ran that's out. Nice. 
yeah and the shirts are really nice so as soon as we Great. get this in we're gonna i would love to try them. i would love to try them absolutely noel mckaylian thank you sir that looks so nice thank you so uh, much all right <laughs> and everyone thank you for joining we'll see you again next time peace